That was so whack. Welcome to Black Republican, Black Democrat. I'm Jamar. I'm your co-host, uh, A.K. Kamara. Well, you, know, you didn't even say you were a co-host, well, bro. You know, because p- folks know me. People know me in this town, damn it. <laughs> How's your week, that. man? You know what's been busy, been like, you know, real busy this election season. So, you know, I've been, you know, doing a lot of a uh, lot of shit. So, you know, um, I've been moving, though, man. I, you know, but you know what? When you're moving, that means you, you, you're doing something and, and, and it's something productive and positive And you know me that I'm all about that. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, this last week we had State Central. You know, those of you in Minnesota, those of you that pay attention to Minnesota politics, we had um, – first we had a, a chair that, that resigned, stepped down in, in disgrace uh, for the Republican Party in Minnesota. And then we, uh, you know, had a, a State Central meeting, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Uh, the big news is we have uh, Kim Klasick. She'll be joining us in a little bit here. Um, and that's pretty awesome. It's someone that we've been hoping to get on just because it fits perfectly in this realm, uh, talking about things that, that we've had discussions in regards to getting differing opinion views, uh, you know, in the black community. So excited for that. And, uh, yeah, man, I mean, this, this week's going to be good. My wife's birthday, shout out to my wife, Bethany. Shout out to Bethany. She got her birthday coming up when on, uh, on Saturday. Oh, Saturday. Saturday. She be what, Sweet 16? Sweet 16. <laughs> Did I earn tw- Yeah. I think I just earned I a mean, few I mean, that's, that's kind of creepy, actually. I'll, uh, she's 21. Oh, I don't, I don't, me. I don't want my, oh, I don't want me, my Mr. wife Republican. to be 16. That, that's super weird. I'm sorry. She's 21 now? <laughs> yeah, no, she's forever 21. So, you know what? It takes a Republican to make something that, oh, get out of here. <laughs> Dude, dude, you know what? See, that's exactly, you remind me of why your party sucks right now. Why my party sucks? Yeah, your that? party sucks bad right now, especially locally. Um, when you have uh, the chair resign because nobody likes her, because she doesn't lead the party in a good direction. And, you know, now she did take you guys out of bankruptcy. You know, she only left you guys $50,000. But, you know, um, she took you guys out of bankruptcy. She was a, a horrible leader. And she didn't win one damn state office while she was uh, chair. And she was chair, like, for, what, 30 years? And um, 30 years? Well, how long was she chair? Four years, okay, three okay, years. Okay, that's long Four enough. Four years, I don't know. Long yeah, enough. 2016. Well, she didn't see one um, uh, uh, statewide office won under her administration. So it, that does tell you a lot. I mean, uh, now, if you ask me, and I, and I can't stand the guy anymore, but if you ask me about Ken Martin, I mean, he's saying Democrats win lots and lots of party, uh, uh, excuse me, uh, statewide seats. So, you know, y'all suck. The people don't believe in you guys anymore. And then you guys elected David Hahn. I mean, that dude is like watching paint dry for real. What leadership is he going to bring to your party? What black people, what brown people is he going to bring into the party? Okay, the dude is like a stick in the mud. That is not aggressive, progressive. It is not something. Well, we don't want progressive, that's for sure. Well, of course you guys don't. No, that's why you guys. I mean, we're, that's, we're conservative. That's we're why conservative you guys. Party. That's why you suck. And <laughs> that's why your party will stay in the quagmire that it's in, electing a guy like David Hahn, who really is uh, some. Well, it's Han, but. Um, Han, Han, tomato, tomato. He knows how to raise money. Oh, and and the, well, the, she the, did purpose, too. the purpose of the, the Republican Party What's chair, that mean? which I personally think. Is your job is to raise money for the for the party. Your candidates are your candidates. They're going to go out there. They're going to run. They're going to do their thing. The party chair's main responsibility is to run an effective organization mm-hmm. that is able to get out and get the word out about Republicans in your state. And I will say that for the issues that the Republican Party in Minnesota has had recently, at least we don't have someone that is representing our party in the Oval Office, in which you have crowds all over of nonpartisan people chanting, "Let's go, Brandon." <laughs> For those of you that that nah. saw that that clip of the, the let's go Brandon, but at at the same time, um, well, I, at, I think, at least his predecessor's going. I mean, that's what America wanted. And but that's again, why we, that's why we kicked his ass. If you're if you're doing so well, I don't think you'd have all these non-political people oh, chanting stop. "Let's go Brandon." Oh, because he, he oh because he doesn't punk the party like some red faced dude did. I mean, no, that's not what Democrats are about. We hey, believe hey, you know, we listen. believe we're real we're a real party of choice. Mm-hmm. We believe in. Uh, uh, folks having an opinion mm-hmm. that differs from yours, mm-hmm. and not punking you or calling calling you up to do illegal acts either, you know, or unethical acts. No, we have we're a different party. You are a different party, and yeah. and like I said, if if we, if the Republican Party sucks, I, I don't know what the Democrats 
uh, are like we're right winning. now. You guys can't get anything you, you remember done. That? You can't get anything we're done. And on top of oh, that, to, okay. to be more Watch honest, I just I just read an article where Joe Biden is frustrated because he can't get things passed, even amongst his own parties. He's having people that are falling off his party. But before we continue, with that, that was a good opening salvo. Let's make sure um, that we real quick talk about some of our sponsors uh, and just kind of go through that. It's important for us, especially considering that our sponsors are the folks that help pay some bills around here. Uh, so for those of you that are, are tuning in uh, to a last show, Jamar wanted to, to kind of kick things off with this new music that we have. Well, yeah, you know, and see, see you're not you're old, uh, old, you're old enough to remember, you know, you've got to call, you've got to call your commercials and sponsors just as such. So where are you going to go if you need uh, something fresh to drink? You need the, some diapers. The Weber Mart. The Weber Mart? The Weber Mart. And what's so great about the Weber Mart? The Weber Mart has all your local things that you need and convenience right there in North Minneapolis. The, the Weber, Weber Mart. Mart. Now, after you go and get those things that you need to drink, and you're looking through your wardrobe, right? And you're you're kind of like, I, I need to get myself some fresh gear. Please head over to 991 Payne Avenue in St. Paul and hit up Just Imagine. Just Imagine they have some of the, the latest urban streetwear clothing for men and women. Uh, they got a lot of women's clothing right now, a lot of handbags, belts, rolling trays, hats, shoulder bags. And if you take a look, this is the website, justimagine651.com. So if you're listening to this show and you're not in the St. Paul area, go to justimagine651.com. You can put in your order for your Flyest gear, your Maccoby's, your George V. Parrish, your NBA Young Boy, Billion Dollar Baby Clothing. And when you are going to buy those clothes, if you enter in... BRBD, you're going to get 10% off of your order. Again, just imagine 651.com. And if you're in St. Paul, head down to 991 Payne Avenue. Thank you. Was that good? Did, uh, well, did, wasn't, did, wasn't did you me. like to music? Wasn't me, but thank you. <laughs> thank you to all those wonderful sponsors. And make sure that you check us out on uh, the, the uh, you know, I, you know, everywhere you get. Everywhere you get the podcast. podcast. So we, we actually set up a link tree. It's L I N K. T R period E E the link forward tree. slash B R B D. So it's link tree forward slash B R B D. And that's actually gonna link you to everything. It's our Instagram, it's our Facebook, um, it's it's all the good stuff. So go to again L I N K T R period E E forward slash B R B D and uh, you can get kind of linked up. That's why you're here. You I mean you do such a great job with that. <laughs> Thank you. A K Kamara. So yeah, man, let's without further delay, we want to bring on uh, the um, in my opinion, very charismatic, um, bright. She's a, a leader, a future leader in our party, I believe. Kimberly Klasik. She ran for uh, Minnesota. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, Maryland's seventh congressional district, right? Um, and yes. she is now the founder of Red Renaissance, which is um, a uh, it's a five twenty seven pack. Is that what it is? I don't know the specific designation, but you you raise money for candidates that fit your values, right? Absolutely. Yep. It's called Red Renaissance. Uh, people can look it up at redrenaissance.com, but we're supporting candidates across the country running for uh, 2022, uh, whether it's a House seat, a Senate seat, even state delegate, state senator, and the local seats like city council and mayoral seats as well. Very cool. Well, then yeah, that's a, you know, that's a great thing to do, especially for a party that sucks right now. But <laughs> Uh, I remember you. You stand out to me because I remember your commercial. Of course, your ad was, you know, like I mean, it was, you know, bam, you know, you walking around the city in those red stilettos, right? And so, you know, it was, it was very catchy, right? Uh, but I think that because you, you, you're a native uh, Maryland, right? You, you're from Baltimore, right? Yeah, well, I grew up in Southern Maryland. I moved to Baltimore about ten, eleven years ago. Okay, so, uh, so. You've seen some of the poverty and the high crime, especially gun crime, that takes place there. So uh, isn't it easy, like in your commercial, the things that you were saying, how it was so easy to uh, point out the things that were happening under a, a Democrat administration. But w when Republicans are out of office, they do nothing about the crime that exists. So. Uh, if you would have won, uh, which you actually let, let's re let make folks remember that uh, it was after Elijah Cummins passed away that, you know, it was a special election that you ran in. Uh, mm -hmm. But he did a great job, too, by the way. And so what would you have done better to <laughs> curb crime? I mean, because we, we know Ben Jealous ran and, and he lost uh, for governor. Uh, he had great ideas. But 
Republicans always, well, he did. He's a Democrat. Terrible and, ideas. Okay. Uh, what would you have done anything different to curb uh, uh, high crime that was existing in your, in your city? Yeah, so I think, you know, Congressman Cummings was a great guy. I think it's debatable whether or not he was a good congressman. Uh, He was in office for over 30 years. Uh, I did run in the special election and then again in the general election against uh, his former uh, predecessor. His name is Congressman Kwaisi Nfume, and he had that seat actually in the 80s and 90s. And so he came back. Uh, He was the president of the NAACP. Uh, I ran against him in the special and then the general, which I lost, uh, unfortunately. But as you can see now, we still have the same problems that exist. Uh, For me, crime and violence is a very serious situation, um, especially here in Baltimore. We have a state's attorney that is progressive. We have a mayor that is progressive. And everyone on city council is a Democrat. It's been like this for over 50 years now. And I think they're very soft on crime. And I think, you know, we are in a place now where we have to be tough on criminals uh, in all, you know, all cities, not just Baltimore. It's not just unique to Baltimore, uh, but to allow people to continue to get away with even certain crimes that people might find uh, could be victimless is still at these two larger crimes that we see. And I don't know if you noticed, but across this country, we've seen a big jump in crime lately. And, uh, you know, Baltimore, again, it's not unique here, uh, but we do have our issues. We'll go down in 2021, uh, probably the most homicides we've ever had in history. Even though our population is 600,000 or less, we used to be at a million and more. Um, and it just keeps getting worse, unfortunately. Now, a lot of this stems from other situations, right? So our education system is terrible. 41% of our Baltimore City High School students have a 1.0 GPA or lower. Um, It's been a bad situation for decades now, and that's something that needs to be handled. Uh, Because of course, if you're, you know, not educated very well, you go off and perhaps you want to go to college or you want to go to another job, but you can't quite cut it. What do you do? You might go to the streets, right? They're in survival mode. And I understand that. But at the same time, we can't allow generation after generation to continue to do the same thing. Uh, So we have to get a handle on education and we have to hold criminals accountable. We have a lot of repeat violent offenders that are on our streets. Uh, It's only a certain, a very low percentage that is causing so much chaos and chaos and havoc here. And we have to do something about it. Uh, You're absolutely right. We we agree on that thing. You're right. It's not just unique to your city. We're experiencing over the last two years um, the most gun crimes and a generation uh but again i again what you were just doing it was blaming democrats instead of coming up with with ideas that republicans can do when they're out of office because they don't help so so let me say again <laughs> who else, who else you, can be blamed though but again you can do things bro you can do things in the community to help instead of blaming when you're not in power sure. i don't i think y'all forget I, I think, that i think it's fair that the question that you asked her though was basically you know what her point is of like her running and she i think she laid it out i, I, don't, I, I don't think you asked her if there's anything that she's doing because i i mean i I see what Kim's up to. I see that she's doing stuff in the community all the time. I, she was with an organization that was helping women that were transitioning out of out of prison, right? I believe that was something that you had a hand in, just helping the actual community um, with some of those, I would say, conservative-minded principles, in my opinion, you know? Great, you should work for her. Yeah. But now, no, I'm, I'm we, just saying, I'm but just saying Kim, that, but Kim, that I've seen her Truthfully enough, stuff. we know that what you're saying is true. That Again, we agree here, agree there. But the problem is, you and I both know that what that leads to is what you're talking about when Democrats are soft on crime is if Republicans get in office and become so hard on crime, what that does as a black woman, you know this damn well, it increases the high, the the, uh, the amount of black male, black and brown men that get incarcerated. You and I know that because then becomes you guys start misusing the laws and imprisoning more black and brown men. Uh, I mean, what do you mean? Well, I, I mean, I think we can ask VP Kamala Harris a little bit more about that because that's what she did. Oh. Or even perhaps Joe Biden with the 1994 crime bill. There but it is. I, I, I figured you'd come out with that. So, so again, was it, it, was it, the, fa- was it the crimes bill, Ms. Klasik, or was it the fact that how it, uh, states went into it and misinterpreted and misused the law? Was it that or was it the crimes bill itself? Because I don't know no, where you lived. You live in a city where crime is all gun crime is always high. It was even higher here in Minneapolis. That was the first time that it ever gotten that high. Ninety-eight murders that particular year, nineteen ninety-five. So myself and other black people 
wanted the governor and the president to come down and crack down on crime. That's what you just said. We were soft on crime. So when there's a Democrat that becomes hard on crime, now you start pointing the finger at that. I mean, wait a minute. You want to have your cake and eat it too? You can't. Well, I think, you know, you're kind of misunderstanding what I'm saying here. Uh, For me, there are Democrat policies that do put a lot of black men and brown men behind bars. I think that's what you were getting to or you were alluding to. Republicans, Uh, too. When you look at the case of Eric Garner, when you look at the case of Eric Garner, remember that situation where he was in New York City and he was choked out by police? Yes, yes, ma'am. A lot of people don't understand that it was a Democrat policy that made him under attack at that moment by police officers. It is a Democrat policy where you cannot sell loose cigarettes on the streets. And then he had the police called on him. That's Kim, a Democrat t- policy. Tell me anywhere, in the, Kim, tell me anywhere in the country where it's legal for you to start selling, for you to buy cigarettes and go out and sell them. I mean, tell me where it's legal. Is it, well, it's a Democrat policy. I didn't ask that you that. I asked that you illegal. I asked you to tell me where it's legal. At, so you're, I don't know, you're saying I, that all policies are that way? I, 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 is it legal here in Minnesota for you to do that? To sell Lucy's? Yeah, is it is it is that? I'm right? sure that there. I I okay. personally, I personally, it's, it's, I have I have bought cigarettes and all over the place. It's prohibited. Okay, it's prohibited. Minneapolis is a but, Democrat city. Oh, okay, okay. Back to you, Miss Clay. But it's well, and that's what I'm trying to say. It's prohibited because it's a Democrat policy okay. that prohibited that. Well, tell and me. So when you look at the, oh, when you look at the the bottom line and why black and brown men are being locked up in the ways that they are, right? Even selling, think about it, selling marijuana in small small doses. That, is, again, is a Democrat policy. So if we want to talk about who's locking up black and brown men, oh, it yeah. would be the Democrats oh, yeah. and the policies they put forth. Okay. Because yeah. Republicans, I forgot y'all saved us. Thank you. So, you know, one of the, one of the things that, that I have always been interested in, Kim, as, as, a, as a black Republican, um, someone that came into the Republican Party, kind of fresh eyed. I I didn't really know a whole lot about the history. And as I started to learn more, I became more and more educated. But one of the things for me, especially seeing what you've done, is that um, you looked at certain candidates with certain policies. And I know that during uh, your run, you found Mm -hmm. out that President Trump had some of these things like the first step and all these different aspects. And so what I kind of want to ask you is that you being out there and you being connected with people in your community because you're trying to earn their vote and you're actually trying to make an impact. And sometimes we get so hyper polarized, right? That's like you're Democrat, you're Republican, but you're out there doing things. And I'm just curious, like for you, what was it that attracted you to the Republican Party and, and, and things like that, you know? Yeah, no, I appreciate that. Um, So I became a Republican in 2009. I actually voted for President Barack Obama in 2008. I think I was sold just like so many people and saying, wow, he's going to be the first black president. That's something that I definitely wanted to see. It's something my family definitely wanted to see. Uh, But when he got into office, I realized his tune changed just a little bit. Uh, I was so happy with the fact that we had a black man in office that showed that he was all about the family structure. By all appearances, he's a great husband. He's a great father. I thought that was something that needed to be shown across this country. Uh, But, you know, he kind of regressed from that once he got into office and started talking about being a victim. And I couldn't understand that. And so then we saw the case with Trayvon Martin. Uh, I don't think George Zimmerman was in the right. Let's, you know, put that on the, (laughs) I'll put that out there right now. But at the same time, I thought we could have taken that conversation in a different direction. And I think uh, President Barack Obama allowed other individuals to take it into an entirely different direction. And maybe he agreed or disagreed, but he never stepped forward and talked about the importance of a family structure what direction what other direction would he have taken it though kim i mean stop that well, i mean he was a no, he's well, a no, black he man if he said if he had a black son that would, that would right. look just like him so what are but you I, saying but i don't think but i don't think so if president barack obama had a black son i think he would be more like his daughters right I i'm not saying that he wouldn't be like trayvon martin but what i'm saying is he tried to take it to a very personal way when he could have said you, you know should what? take this i take it personally i'm a father this of a black son Zimmerman i took it personally too wrong. Yeah. This is how George Zimmerman was wrong. Uh, I think the lawyers really botched that case. I think they overcharged George Zimmerman, and that's yes. why it ended in the acquittal. Yes. If you remember, in 2015, yes. we had the riots here in Baltimore City, and those cops that you know were involved in the Freddie Gray case, those cops were also overcharged, and again, it ended in an acquittal. And I think we should have talked about the I fact that, that those cases did not come out in the outcome that I think the, the society wanted to see because you. of the charges that were put 
put forth. Yes, ma'am. And then we had to talk about the laws that were already in place and why why those outcomes came to the way it was. Agreed. I don't think it was a black or white issue. Of course it was. I think we should of talk course it was. About Stop that now. That were in place. That's the Republican now, in you. Me, that's the Republican in you saying about that. President Trump. Mm-hmm. When you were talking about President Trump, I did have a, a nonprofit for eight years. We did workforce development, as you mentioned earlier. So we helped women get back to work from incarceration, rehabilitation, and homelessness. And then some kids coming right out of high school. And so that's what's very important to me, getting real people and real career opportunities that have benefits and salaries. We're not talking about raising the minimum wage. We're not talking about making sure people have their rent paid. We're talking about home ownership. We're talking about benefits. We're talking about salaries. We're talking about things that we should be talking about for any adult in this country, no matter their race. And so for me, when I saw President Trump step forward with that first step act, and I had a friend that worked on it with him. His name is Jerron Smith. He worked in his uh, administration and he worked on the first step act with President Trump. That was huge to me because I knew there were so many people coming out of incarceration that didn't have the skills or the training to go into some of these careers that we were trying to get them into. There were a lot of people that went to prison uh, before the the big tech boom and so they had to adjust and learn how to use the internet learn how to fill out applications online uh as if you know they were starting from day one and the first step act actually helped these individuals get that training before they got back out out there in the field and to me that meant the world to me because that's what we were trying to do we weren't trying to place people in jobs we were trying to place them in careers and that's the difference yeah i was wondering how long it's going to take for you to start uh patting your boy trump on the back stop playing look uh uh, I mean, I mean, that's 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 what's amazing. You wanna you you bash President Obama because he he become a he became a victim. What that is, but excuse me, you just you just said that he created a victim mentality. When I hear black Republicans, well, he did. no, he did he not. Did do that. See, I guess what see that's what I'm saying about black Republicans. You guys are so annoying because you guys start talking. About, <laughs> you don't talk about reality anymore because you guys are you start uh, associating with a different crowd. I think you kind of sometimes y'all start losing with your place of where wait, wait, you've been. You, you, with, uh, you start losing your blackness. Well, is sometimes that, is that you do. The next trope is? Sometimes some of y'all do. Okay. And again, mm-hmm. so for you to say that this man, instead of talking like a black man, so he should change the way he is. He, he can't change the color of his skin because he was in his no, office. No, no. He. I think as a senator, I, I related to Barack Obama more as a senator than when he became the president. And I understand. When you he had more of a victim mentality then. What are you talking ear. about? You have more people in your ear telling you which way to turn. And I understand that. But as a senator, if you look back to some of the things that he said, especially on immigration, especially on uh, job opportunities and career, you will see Senator Barack Obama aligned with a lot of black Republicans you hear from today. That's right. Okay. You know what? I was going to say real quick. One of the things that that I've I've found important in in one of the reasons that we do the show, to be honest, is we want to talk about issues, right? And yes, we're going to take barbs. This man is a proud Democrat. I'm a proud Republican. I ain't going to back down from my boy Trump. I believe he is the greatest president in modern history. I believe yeah, I he did more for black uh, and everybody, but especially <laughs> black when you look at the the increase um, in, in income, you look at the decrease of poverty and unemployment, oh, yeah. things like that. I, so I'll always stand there, but I yeah, always right. do come back to the issues. And we alluded to a little bit earlier that Minneapolis is – just like Baltimore in regards to having this high crime spike, right? And when we talk about issues and being real, you know, you being so involved in Baltimore, are you seeing what we could potentially see in the future? Because right now there's a ballot amendment that will effectively give the city council the ability to completely disband the Minneapolis police and reform something. I don't know what it's going to be. Um, And so, you know, do I think that Baltimore is, they kind of jumped that shark, not maybe in regards to abolishing or, or re- restructuring, but they've done a lot of stuff with like the DA. So my question to you is, you know, what do you think Baltimore is reeling from after George Floyd's murder in regards to some of the changes? And do you think that Minneapolis might be on the same path, if you know? Yeah, no, you'll, you'll definitely see what we're seeing today. So so our city council, our mayor, they have complete control of the Baltimore City Police Department. Uh, right now we're down 500 patrol uh, officers on patrol. Uh, it's very unfortunate. Our police commissioner has asked for federal help. I don't know if he's going to get it. Uh, but we defunded the police uh, just last year by $22 million. This June, our mayor ended up refunding the police by $28 million because we had so many cops that left the force, so many uh, retired, some 
who just left, um, and the morale is completely down. Now, I think what's different here is that we're under a consent decree, which I don't think you guys are under at this point. Uh, so we had a lot of police no. officers that felt that it uh, basically, you know, this and cuff their hands when it comes to doing their job. Uh, there's a lot of times where they'll take like juvenile down to uh, central booking. They call it a walkthrough where they'll actually take a, a juvenile down. They walk him through and he goes right back out, maybe home to his parents. Um, and that's what I talk about when we say we're soft on criminals. We are very soft on criminals, especially juveniles. And unfortunately, right now, all of our armed carjackings, 90% of them are done by juveniles. And a lot of these gangs, they know that these juveniles are going to do these walkthroughs, so they recruit these kids that are 18 and under. Uh, now, it's very unfortunate. Like I said, we're down patrol uh, officers on patrol. Uh, but at the same time, we have a, a progressive state's attorney, Marilyn Mosby, who believes uh, that she doesn't have to prosecute some of these crimes if there is no victim involved. So it's not like a homicide, a murder case. Sometimes she'll just let it go. And then you'll see these repeat violent offenders back on our streets time and time again. And then on top of it, we have strong gun control laws. So there's a lot of people that cannot get the concealed carry permit even though they're amazing citizens and they deserve to be able to carry yeah. uh, but we have a state unfortunately with strong gun laws where we cannot do that so that was something that i had on my docket that i wanted to push forward uh, as a member of congress is making sure that we had people good people that had a better access to be able to carry guns themselves and so that was something that i wanted to push forward but yeah we we have a lot of problems here like i said our consent decree is a problem that i don't think you guys have uh, just as of yet, but I, I would say that the homicide rate is 10 times the national average, and there's a reason that it's like that, and I hope that you guys don't experience what we're experiencing here. You and I both. I, but, but but I think that, and, 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 and Mosley's doing a really good job too, but I think <laughs> that what happens is, again, you go to talking about being soft on crime, is she recognized that, the, that these are targeted laws towards black and brown men, and they're being on fairly imprisoned at a high rate and it's funny that you don't recognize that either so that's what i'm saying that's just, this is probably why republicans don't well, win I think public you have office to look at the population i mean here in baltimore city i don't know about you guys but in baltimore city 70 percent of the population is black right so when you look at the population and you say who's behind bars i mean the majority of our city is black Oh, okay. And so if they're committing the crimes, you're going to see a very high black population behind bars. Oh, right. OK. And so that's but we'll, but leave it to Trump and Republicans there. You guys will save us. So, look, uh, <laughs> look, we, we, we talked about you. Did you vote for Donald Trump? Of course, you, yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I know. Bless your heart. Me too. Proud. Uh, proud. I know. You guys right like, here. You see this? You it says on my wristband. OK, Trump 2024. Take back America. <laughs> yeah. That's right. I'm rocking this every day. Every oh, day okay. I'm rocking this. And on the other side, it says, we kicked your ass, you'll lose again. It says, take so, back America. So, uh, Kim, but, but, so <laughs> here's the thing. Why do you think, and I, I know we don't want to hold you all day, and I really appreciate you coming on. Why do you yeah, think that, so. why or what do you think Republican laws or could do better for black folks than you, what you claim and that Democrats are doing? What would be different on the Republicans? Yeah, so I think, you know, one of the things that I really push was school choice. Um, here, like I said earlier, Baltimore City, we have a, a problem with our education system. And unfortunately, those that are kind of uh, pigeonholed in certain zip codes, uh, they only have access to certain schools. And so their kids are only being so educated. Do you know what I mean? They, they don't have the teachers that some of the other schools have. They don't have even the sports teams or anything like that, the outlets that some of these other schools have. And I would love for those individuals to be able to go with outside their zip code and choose a school of their choice that they want to send their, their kid to. Um, I think that would be huge, uh, you know, in, in Baltimore. Uh, when I talk about other things, I also talk about career opportunities. Um, here in Baltimore, and I don't know how it is there for you guys, but our mayor isn't really doing anything to want to welcome more business to the city, right? So we have a lot of laws against small business on the books. I think we should open that up and really push for entrepreneurship, especially when it comes to black and brown individuals. I think we should be pushing for entrepreneurship within our communities, uh, making sure that they do get access to those same bank loans uh, that you know white people get as well. I think, you know, why not start pushing for some of those things? We agree uh, there. For us, there's so many things that we could be doing. No, we agree there, absolutely. I mean, especially when you say white folks, Look, so I know what's important to me. This uh, uh, are you actively 
in the black communities as well? Are you just uh, using oh, yeah. your uh, a, a pulpit, your bully bull pulpit and social media screaming at what Democrats aren't doing while not going into black communities trying to do something? Are you actively doing something in black communities? So right now we have a tutoring program uh, every Saturday from 9.30 to 11.30. I talk about the education system failing our kids. Uh, we sponsor a tutoring program in West Baltimore at a church where we've had a lot of people come out. Uh, we have teachers, people that are bilingual, teaching other languages. It's really been working out well. Uh, that Saturday mornings, 9.30 to 11.30 at Simmons Baptist Memorial. Uh, and then, of course, uh, you know, we did the school supply giveaway. We ended up I think clothing 64 kids uh, with school uniforms. And that was really great because we were able to use my social media platform and we had sponsors and donors across the country that were buying school uniforms for kids in Baltimore city. It was a very easy hookup. We literally took the sponsor to the, to the family and they talked to each other, got the the sizes and everything they needed and pushed it out. Uh, But yeah, I'm, I'm in the community every week. I mean, this is what I live and I grieve. Um, right now we're going through redistricting in the state of Maryland. Yeah, so our, our district's going to be a little bit different, right. uh, coming up in 2022, but you know, this is where my heart is. This is what I want to do. I want to revitalize Baltimore city. We have 13,000 vacant homes just sitting there. Uh, that's something that we should change. You know, think about how that feels for a kid Absolutely. waking up, going to school, walking by vacant homes, you know, dealing with the trash, the illegal dumping and the rats. And just everything that they're dealing with on just a journey to school. You know, you are a product of your environment. And I think we can better the quality of life through some of the policies that we can push forth. No, that's absolutely right. No, I just, you know, because you got people like other uh, black conservative women like Candace Owens, who has never stepped foot in the hood, but yet from afar talks about black people and black men and what we aren't doing and black leadership and what they aren't doing. But again, she, with her white boyfriend, she never steps a foot in the hood. So that pisses me off. No, so I, I don't take what she says at any, worth any grain of salt because you're not around in, you the, know, black, the, in the hood. The thing is, and then we're, we're going to let you go, Kim, because you've been, you've been awesome. Um, Thank you, Kim. You know, on on this show, again, I just want to reiterate that what we're about is having conversations about solutions, about things like that. And and mad respect, um, especially for you. There's there's people that I know in my party here in Minnesota. They'll run for office. They they don't get the result that they want. And then they dip set. They're, they're out. Dip, they're, they're out. You they know? never see them. And, yeah. and yeah. I think that it, yeah. it puts that much more like realness to you that you are staying and you are continuing to help. And and I know that that this proud Democrat, he respects that because we talk I do. about stuff no, on, I do. No, I, I got mad respect for the <laughs> fact that, yes, you know, losing twice, uh, you know, that's my ding. Uh, but that, though, that you stayed around. No, no, for real, sister, that you stayed around. I'm proud of that. And that makes me proud and, and makes me know that it speaks to your character of you. And the fact that if you ever went off is that you would work with Democrats to make sure that your city um, uh, is taken care of. And so that means a lot to me that, like you, like AK just said, that most Republicans are losers anyway, Republicans or Democrats. They always promise black folks this. No, I mean, both parties. Seriously, yeah, 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 when they yeah. lose, yeah. you never see them again until the next time they run yeah, for yeah, office. And you abandoned. you aren't doing that. And I'm so proud of that and happy of that. And that's, you know, you should show your party the, that's the way to do it. And so I certainly appreciate that. I swear to goodness. Hey, thank you so much, Kim. Thank you and, so and, much. Uh, uh, I know that you have you founded this Red Renaissance. People want to find more. Is it just redrenaissance.com is where they head to and yeah, they can sign up? Redrenaissance.com. We're supporting uh, candidates all across the country. I know for myself as a minority, I didn't get the support from the GOP party That's nationwide. Right. That's right. we uh, so about we're supporting that. right. a lot of minorities that are running for office right. in their own communities uh, in the inner cities. I mean, people talk about Republicans don't win in inner cities, but we got to show up. We yeah. got to be on the show ballot. Up. We, we don't pull money. Wait, wait, wait. We're wait, on the same wait, page. Wait, wait, with Kim. That. Say that again. You got to do what? Got to what? We, we got to show up. We got to be on the ballot. We got to be in the community. So you are my friend now. Kids. You are my friend. You are my. No, I mean, Kim, because that's what I scream. Right. I've worked for Republicans, too. Right. And I worked recently for a black Republican that lives in the hood, but wanted to, you know, uh, uh, wanted to campaign outside of it. And that's exactly what I tell Republicans is, don't come around September doing an election cycle, stick around, put in a couple of field offices there on a yearly basis to build those relationships because black folks are tired of Democrats too. 
black folks and brown folks are tired of Democrats, but we have a relationship. We know what to expect out of said Democrat, right? And I'm not so willing to give a, a Republican that I don't know a chance because, again, I don't know you. You're not around. And so to hear you say that, AK says that too, yeah. but to hear Republicans say that, black Republicans, it's so refreshing. And I so appreciate that. And, you know, you could take it on the chin by saying that. And I obviously you don't care because you care about your community. And I got mad, mad respect for you saying that. I swear to God. Thank you. Yes, I, I care about the community more than I care about the party. That's so like for me, Amen. you know, we got to have her back on. Huh? Yeah, we do got to have her back I like on. You. I'd love to have her back no, on. I like you, Kim. That's and uh, we talk about uh, I like some that. other stuff, too. Yeah. You know? No, I swear. I know. Time just got away. Thank you so much, you back Kim. On. We really, really appreciate <laughs> Thank you. you. Thank you, Kim, man. Uh, you know, you. Uh, good luck with your endeavor, Red Renaissance. And um, uh, I hope that uh, this, that that uh it blossoms and uh because you are a, a role model of what uh black republican women and and minority women um should be like and 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 should strive for and so again i greatly appreciate you we have greatly appreciate thank you. you thank you much thank you both yeah thank, thank you, you Kim. have a great evening yeah that's good no 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 I, I i like her though bro you know at first you know i thought i was gonna have you know a uh, 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 sparring match with this republican that walked around and rich stiletto was talking about what democrats didn't do but she was a breath of fresh air bro and and i like that you know yeah. when we can find common ground because we, we talk about that all the time we get a, we've gotten away from that you yeah, know yeah. over the last eight four years however you want to say um we've just gotten away from it yeah and you know we've had some people commenting uh, if if you guys have any things that you want to say please comment we're going to throw up your comments uh on on the screen here you know one of the things that we started the show off with and gets kind of back into this this conversation that we've had so many times with different candidates about what's the Republican Party really going to do to try and help grow the party in regards to what I see as this huge potential in black communities. And I know that you, you poo poo it and whatever about the amount of black males that Trump got in different areas. But I, I see that as a net, he had as 8 a net positive of, black people in 2016. Of, of a net positive. You know, here's what's crazy. And, and then I'll kind of go to that main point. This is what's crazy, and I don't know if anybody's ever thought about this or, or done the research. If you look at the gain from 2016 to 2020 that Trump had with black males and other males, uh, black females, not so much he had a gain. But if you combine the total increased pickup of black males, Hispanic males, right, Trump in 2020 would have beat biden you want to know what no. okay we're gonna we're gonna put aside the fraud and all those allegations we'll put that aside put that aside mm -hmm. the reason that biden won is mm -hmm. because white men and white women voted less for trump the second time the first time so just think yeah. about that right more black and non-white people voted for Trump as a percentage. That's not true. And the reason that that's he didn't true. win is because that's definitely not less true. white people voted for him. Okay. That's, so that's what's that's, it's crazy that's, when that's you think about definitely that. not true. But but to say but to to go back and I know you're gonna disagree with it, we this had a new true. we had a new Republican Party chair elected. You kind of talked about David Han, and I always remember ah, this. I his name is. Han Han was well, like like Han Solo. Right, like, or the other is he, like he's Han, gonna be like Han, Han Solo, but with the election of him as chair, I think that he's gonna be able to bring money. The question really is, and I don't know. I would, I would love to what have him on the show. If you're not winning. I would love to have him on the show to ask him, does he have a plan or a strategy oh. for building on these things that, truly, honestly, the Trump administration made in Minnesota? <laughs> what does, was he that? Have, does he have a plan to do it? I mean, I assume he does because I I know him as uh, as a as a state senator. I think he's a good man. I think he's a principled man. Mm -hmm. I'm just curious, and I would love to be able to have him on the show, but that's that's where I, it's a new chapter for mm -hmm. the Republican Party of Minnesota. Yeah, right. We've closed this old chapter, so we can kind of, we can move forward in that regard and see what the future will hold for us. But, you know, for you, you probably are like, who cares? It doesn't matter. You oh, know? No, I, I care because you, I, as long as you guys keep losing, uh, <laughs> it makes a difference to me. And that's what you guys are going to continue to do, especially when you elect a guy like David Hahn. I mean, again, your party is afraid to uh, uh, put, to sprinkle any type of color in it. And um, I think that because of Trump, when you look at, when I, because when I was working for uh, Rob Bernheis, I shouldn't say his name publicly, but um, sure. there was a lot of uh, Somali Americans mm -hmm. 
that were Republicans but were afraid because, number one, of, of Trump and they were going to be ostracized in the community. But prior to Trump, was, were, was not afraid to, because most black folks are conservative in nature, right? Yeah. Doesn't yeah. mean we vote Republican, but conservative in nature. And so uh, that speaks a lot to the guys that you elected and locally and uh, at, the, uh, at the federal level as well. Uh, and so that speaks to uh, Jennifer Carnahan, who did a horrible job of running uh, viable candidates that would that that uh, even black Democrats could say, okay, that's somebody that I could vote for because uh, again, an I.E. Kim Clasey is is if, if you sit her down and around Democrats, uh, you're gonna come out of let, let's let's say you got 52 Democrats. You probably, after she speaks, after she talks, are probably going to come out of the room with about 27 of those people, 31, 33 people, that are uh, probably w willing to vote for it, give this girl a chance. Sure. Right? Sure. But, again, where's the relationship that Republicans try to foster? They don't. And that's why I'm saying about it. We, we should uh, invite David Hahn on because it's important to give the lip service, and I, he will too. He'll give, and I'll, I hope he sits right there. And I'll look him in his eye and tell him, "You give the lip service about how you bring in black people, and you'll be in the black community, and it's important to you to have black people and brown people in our current party because we're big ten Republicans. That's us here, the GOP. But then don't do it. Hey, I, like enough I said, enough. like like I said, enough I, is enough. I I've been I've been talking, and I'm I'm not going to say who it was with because I haven't, didn't ask him if I could talk about it, but. I volunteer at every state central state convention for the Republican Party of Minnesota. I am a dyed in the wool Republican and unless the party does like crazy things, truly crazy things, I'm going to back my party and so I volunteer. I put my money where my mouth is. I volunteer for free and um as I was having conversations with folks, we we were talking about this, right? Like you brought up, you know, having the folks from the Somali community. And this one guy said to me, you know, a guy that I understand, he's like, you know, if we could just really get our message out there to them, I said, see, this is where your, your thinking is backward. We could run a million ads. We can send out a million flyers. It's not going to matter. These people, whether it's a black man or a Somali woman already have values are right of center in general, right? From like a cultural perspective. So it's not about we need to tell them anything. We just need to be there. And listen, ask them what they want. Stop right, telling right. them what they need. Be there. And at least, I'm not saying we're going to win in one election cycle as Republicans, won't. right? Won't. But you know what? At least we will give people the opportunity. And, and it's funny. I, I had a conversation with a buddy <laughs> and I've heard this and I've said it to some of the other people that have been on here where I say, you know, if we put some time and effort into these areas, I think we could make a difference. And you get the, well, that's a waste of money. People should take their donor dollars and put it in a district that can win. And it's that mentality that I have disliked for so long. And maybe it's the risk taker in me. Okay, I, I'm a guy that believes you take risks. If something ain't working, obviously the Republican Party sucks in in, in any urban area that has a high minority population. In general, they suck. Indeed. So what do you do to change? You sometimes have to take risks. And when you when you just tap your toe in, you're like, oh, it didn't work. See? See? Loss of my investment. That was dumb. We could have picked up this seat. I'm like, okay, well, did you actually put forth a, a good strategy? I'm not saying you got to spend every dollar, every minute campaigning. Yes, you still have to win every you know area that you're representing but it'll, it'll be interesting and and i'm gonna hold people's feet to the fire you know when, when i have these conversations with with folks that come on the show you know I, I ran into gazelka i ran into jensen um you know we're gonna have uh michelle benson who's running for governor on on a show in a little bit um we're gonna have cc davis um on a, a future show again she's running as a republican you know, asking these questions about what are you really trying to do in these these areas because that's the strategy is you have to be able to grow in these areas that are highly densely populated. Rural areas aren't densely populated. They already have a higher turnout. Yes, you can maybe pick up some there, but you have such an opportunity in these more densely populated areas. So that's that's my rant. That's my rave. I, I think that the Republican Party 
Um, I think we're going to do the right thing. I think we're, yeah, right. we're with David we're Hahn gonna, as your as your as your if guy. If you can raise the money and then they can start putting that money into the grassroots, because that's to me, I'm a grassroots guy too, and I've said that before on other shows. Put money into the grassroots, grow from the bottom up. There is there's so much opportunity there, and uh, I think we can we can you know maybe take over the Minnesota State House. You know, don't, don't keep don't. keep the uh, keep, keep the keep, Senate keep dreaming. You're right. Yeah. And win a governor because we haven't had a oh. governor win statewide office since, since 2006 Jesus in Minnesota. A, since Jesus was a boy and it, it won't happen now. Dude, again, you, you, you don't run. You, you you don't you guys don't run viable candidates and that's that's your own fault and then you guys pick a guy like David ha- ha- Han Han okay David Han Han and uh, again the guy that's not gonna reach out to black community not gonna have who's to say that oh because he did as a senator too he did uh, a he, great okay. job he's the a ship. state senator oh. okay and to be fair I believe was he he was never the majority because we took the majority the Republicans took the majority. Like un like it was surprise, right? And Gazelle got a four seat majority right but, now, three four seat majority. Yeah, yeah right but now. I'm saying, but before that though, it had been a long time. I oh, think since okay. Republicans. So he was the minority Senate leader, oh, so, which which is a different it's a different type of thing. Oh, so no, don't foster relationship because you're the relationship with other black folks because you are. Uh, no, I'm saying he's representing his his constituency. The there you go, Justin. I'm just saying point. you never know. Yeah, you, you don't. Gotta, yeah. You gotta give the man a chance. He's gonna suck. give him a chance. He's so gonna we'll, suck, we'll and that's why your party's gonna continue to go down. You guys are not gonna win because you don't. Elect you're not a real big tent party because there's no tent in the party. This color tent. There's no tent oh, there's in the no party. Tent? No, there's no tent <laughs> in the party. So how hey, the hell? Know, hey, at at State Central. Now this gets a little bit like in the weeds, but State Central is the 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 folks that kind of conduct the business, the official business in Minnesota Republican Party, the official business. So it's a small group. It's like 365 people, right? And then state convention is the larger body that endorses for governor and stuff like that, right? Right, right. And so state central, I saw a lot of new black faces. That I never, I never seen, I never seen around. And you won't again. They were probably paid to be there. They were uh, they, no, somebody's staff. No. Being a state central delegate is basically a reward for being a good activist. Um, I myself, I was a state central delegate before. The district that I live now, I someone's like, oh, why aren't you state central delegate? And I was like, well, one, I don't really put in that much volunteer effort. There are people that I know that put in way more volunteer effort, and I respect that. Well, y'all do like so, Republicans do like black folks to do. But shit my point for free. is, is that those state central delegates. Those are real activists. Uh-huh. You don't you don't just win on popularity. It's uh-huh. it's about what kind of work do you do, um, mm-hmm. and that's that's what it is. So again, I think that that things are going in the right direction. Yeah. Now, me personally, you know this. I don't care if there's black people. I don't. I I care that there is just a. Well, how's that a reflective party? Well, that's what I'm saying. So to me, if you just go grab a random black person and say, aha, I got a black guy, and they that's don't... What, that's they normally don't, what you guys they don't, do. They don't that's, have, what, that's probably what those they delegates were there doing, too. They don't have the values. That's unimportant to me. I think it's about if you do a good job with your actually getting out and being around, you will pull in different people. And that's that's to me what it's really about. Well, y'all don't get out to be around, so how y'all going to pull in people? <laughs> That's why I'm saying we got to do that. Yeah, yeah, not. And David Hahn is not going to be. You never the, know. The, he's he not going to introduce you guys into he, something new. Hey, I am I'm optimistic. Oh, I, I think it's a, a great new oh, fresh you start. Bet fresh Miller win beneath my win. He no, that was, for that, your was optimism. La- that was last episode. For your, no, no, for your. <laughs> For your optimism. Yeah, please. Q Bet Miller. When every time you get so optimistic on me, I want to cue Bet Miller win beneath my wing. Okay? Because you are so soft, as uh, Kim just said, when it comes to Republicans on the fact that uh you giving them the benefit of the doubt. Dude, they 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 really do suck. We got any questions? Any comments? No, nah, that's it, man. I think this is a good show. We're ending a little bit early. Couple of things. Um, we appreciate you guys commenting on the show, sharing the show. Always appreciate that. Make sure to head over to the yeah, link tree. Did you tell people how lucky we were last month? How many people came and? Sh- oh and yeah. Stuff? So so last month, so the month of September, you guys were great. We had six over actually sixty five thousand views on all of our content. And that was amazing, and that's 100 percent because of, of you guys that watch the show, which camera that share it, that that you know appreciate our content. But make sure you guys do head to that link tree, l i n k 
tr period ee forward slash brbd and you'll be able to connect with all of our different accounts you know hit that hit that patreon account become a subscriber Thank you. Yeah, right. um mad respect mad props we're gonna have a good show next week we got a, a clint connor who's running connor. for minneapolis mayor yep, yep. and then the week after that i think we got a uh, city council candidate coming on and then benson on it in the money yeah. i mean look it's 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 yeah. it's uh it's politics season right yeah, we got it's, uh, it's, uh, it's moving in that uh, politics uh, season uh, uh, mayoral election the city council election and, and and 27 days so we're gonna stay on top of it you know so i appreciate kim clacy coming on tonight I, I i you know i i couldn't be mean to her after you know she started warming my heart with some of the things that she was saying <laughs> so i couldn't be mean to her so i appreciate kim clacy coming on and taming my tongue taming your tongue yeah she did because i was like you know <laughs> you ready yeah, man. You know, she's a good lady, and I hope that uh, she does win elected office somewhere because I think that she, uh, she could uh, show Republicans how it, um, how it's done. You know, um, how accessible you should be in and out of office, yeah. whether you win or lose. It's about still being, and th and that's the point that I always drive home is when you lose, come back to the community. Yeah, and uh, again, thank you everyone for watching. You guys have a good rest of your week. I'm Jamar. I'm AK Kamara. Dude. See, earlier it was too soft. Now, now it's too hard. Bust your hand up, man. Yeah, well, take that old brass ring off. <laughs> I don't know how you got in the building with that goddamn thing on. <laughs> See y'all next week.